Welcome, my name is Janine and in this video I will introduce you to the constellation known as Aries the Ram. We will review how to find Aries in the sky, the celestial objects that are within the boundaries of this constellation, and some of the mythological stories that are connected to this star pattern. Aries is classified as an ancient constellation, and it's often represented as a ram. However, there are many other cultures around the world that see this star pattern as something a little different and something that matches their own myths and legends. In the world of astronomy, Aries is classified as a zodiacal constellation because the sun passes through its boundaries. So let's take a closer look at this constellation. As I said, it is classified as an ancient constellation, and its earliest depiction comes from ancient Babylonia, and there it was represented as a ram. But there's other cultures in the, around the world that see something different. For example, in the Marshall Islands, they see it as a porpoise. China sees twin inspectors. In the Hindu culture, we see twin Vedic gods, and even the Polynesian cultures recognize Aries, but see something a little different. The name Aries is Latin for ram, and it was recorded as one of Ptolemy's 48 constellations in the second century, and it also was depicted in Al Sufi's Book of Wonders. So, when can you see it? It's best seen in the northern hemisphere during the late autumn months into the early winter months. And the way I find it is by looking for the Pleiades star cluster, which really stands out in this photo. If you can find Pleiades, then you know that Aries is nearby. This is a constellation I really struggled to find for a long time, but now that I recognize and just memorize that fact that it's really close to the Pleiades, I have absolutely no trouble finding this in the sky. So from there, I'm able to point out this simple four star pattern. So another constellation that can be used to find it is Triangulum. I also reckon always, always, always encourage you to find dark skies because you're always going to have a better view when you're looking at the stars. For Aries, most of the stars are between second and third magnitude, and its shape, well, if you can call it a shape, it's kind of like a curved line, makes it a little challenging to identify. Now let's take a look at the star pattern of Aries. Here we have the official star map released by the International Astronomical Union, and there's a few things I want to point out to you. First, this blue line goes right through Aries, and this is the ecliptic, which is the path of the sun. And when the path of the sun crosses through a constellation, we classify it as a zodiacal constellation. The other thing I want you to notice is right here. This is the Pleiades star cluster, and you can use that star cluster to help you find Aries. Some other things to point out, we have Triangulum nearby. This is a simple triangle-shaped constellation, and you have the Triangulum galaxy right here. You also have Pisces right here, but Pisces, I find, is a really difficult constellation to find because if you look at most of the size of the stars here and then look at the key, you can see that the stars are pretty faint. And remember with star magnitude, the, the smaller the number, the brighter it is. So most of the stars of Pisces are of fifth and sixth magnitude, and Aries definitely stands out when you compare it to Pisces. And if we were to zoom in here a little bit, just notice the Pleiades right here. That's what you're gonna use to help you find Aries. And that the stars are not very bright. We have the alpha star right here, and that one's easier to point out. But once you find the Pleiades, look for the alpha star, and then you, hopefully you can find the rest of the pattern. And remember that constellations are not just the patterns, but really all the stars that sit within the boundary. Constellations are more like 
orders of countries in the sky than just the star pattern that you see. So every star within this white boundary is a part of the constellation. So now let's get some practice with how to find Aries. Here we've got a great picture and we can see the Pleiades. It stands out right here. And this is a star cluster I've always been fascinated with. And now I just use it to help me find other constellations. So here is the Pleiades and then right here is that kind of curved line of Aries. And if we were to point it out, that's what Aries looks like in the sky. And remember, when we're trying to learn about constellations and find the star patterns, practice makes perfect. So let's get some more practice. Here we have a picture and there's some things going on here. We have the Pleiades right here and then we have this bright object right here, which is not a star, but a planet. So this is pretty typical of what you could see even if you have an area that has lots of light pollution, you're still likely able to find this star, this star pattern. So here's the Pleiades, so you know that Aries is over in this direction. And if we were to point it out, this is where it is. So the Pleiades has many names depending upon the culture. Sometimes it's been called the Seven Sisters Star, but this is where Aries is right here. And then here we have Jupiter. So let's keep getting some more practice with finding Aries. Here is another star, a star picture that we have. And some things I want you to try to look at include the Pleiades. So can you find the Pleiades? Here it is. Okay, and if we were to point all the constellations that you can see, here we are. So let's go over what we're looking at. We have right here is this is Perseus. Uh, we have some new videos about Perseus on this channel. So if you want to learn more about how to find it, please go check out that video. Here we have the Pleiades. This is where Aries is right there. Here is where Triangulum is. And then here is Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is another great constellation you can use to help aim you in the direction of Aries. So here you kind of have this little point. Think of this as like a, an arrow pointing you straight towards Aries. Let's take a look at one more picture just to get some more practice. Here we have the what you would see probably in the late autumn into the early winter sky. Maybe some things you could see here would be Orion. We've got a video on that, so if you wanna learn more about Orion, go see that video. There's also Taurus, but then you can also find Aries as well. To me, Orion and Taurus are easier to point out than Aries is, but since I know where the Pleiades is, I can kind of backtrack in the sky and figure out where it is. So let's go ahead and point everything out. We've got Orion in green, we have Taurus, in purple and then in orange we have Aries. So keep using these different strategies to help you find Aries in the sky. Sometimes when I look at it now I always wonder how did I struggle to find this because it really is pretty easy to find but I think it's just that it, it doesn't really have a strong definitive shape besides being a little bit of a curved line. So um, I hope these strategies help you with how to find Aries. Now we'll take a look at some of the celestial objects that you can see within the boundaries of Aries. So here we have a different star map that shows you all the different celestial objects that are not only in Aries, but in a lot of the other constellations as well. And I'm hoping you'll notice all the different red spots that you can find um, throughout the autumn sky. And I want to point this out because these are all galaxies. And the autumn season is a great time to look for galaxies because we are oriented away from the Milky Way galaxy. So that allows distant galaxies to shine through. And that's primarily what you're gonna find within Aries are galaxies. So here we have our picture of Aries and the different galaxies are located in these areas. So now we're gonna take a closer look at those. So NGC 772 is an unbarred spiral galaxy. And what a gorgeous picture this is. I just love it. I never get tired of these pictures. This galaxy is estimated to be 130 million light years away. It's about 200 
1,000 light years in diameter, which makes it twice the size of the Milky Way galaxy, and it's located in this region of Aries. And if we were to take a look at a different picture of it, this is another one. This is kind of more zoomed out here, but you can see it's a really amazing spiral galaxy, and there's no bar in it. Okay, but you can still see the arms coming out and you can see there's a little bit of unevenness in terms of the shape of the arms and the brightness as well. But this is something that you would need some heavy magnification to see and some super dark skies to even point them out. Our next galaxy is called NGC 1156, and this is a dwarf irregular galaxy. And this one's much closer than the last galaxy we took a look at. It's estimated to be 25 million light years away, and it's classified as an irregular, irregular galaxy because it doesn't really have a shape to it. Next, we have NGC 972, and this is a spiral galaxy that's estimated to be 70 million light years away. And here is where that galaxy would be located as well. And I find this galaxy really interesting. It kind of has this orangish pink glow, and that's because of the hydrogen, hydrogen gas that's reacting towards some of the light that's coming from these nearby new stars. So it's very interesting to see. Next we have NGC 697. This is a spiral galaxy that's estimated to be 2.73 million light years away and it's located in this region of the constellation. Now let's take a look at some of the ancient mythologies that are connected to the star pattern of Aries. First, we have the ancient Babylonian star catalogs, and this was the earliest depiction of Aries that has been seen and recorded in human history. Aries itself is translated as the farm worker, and the Babylonian star catalogs was a very important document because it recorded the rising and setting of stars and constellations. It had a path of the moon and planets. It had a solar calendar, and essentially it timed the different agricultural activities that needed to happen during different parts of the year. And it wasn't just the Babylonians that did this. The Sumerians, Egyptians, and Greeks all recorded the skies and observed them so they knew when to plant, when to harvest, and so on and so forth. Middle Eastern cultures also acknowledged Aries, and it was seen depicted right here in the Book of Wonders that was written by al-Sufi. Now, al-Sufi was a Persian astronomer, but this book was written in Arabic, and it really combined information from Ptolemy's work in the 2nd century along with indigenous Arabic astronomical traditions. But you can't think about Aries without talking about the ancient Greek legends of the Golden Ram. Over the cultures, many saw this constellation as a ram, and it was a very prized animal to the nomad tribes in the Middle East. But of course, the Golden Ram has its own legends. And if we take a look at some of those, this legend is talking about the Golden Fleece. And this myth really has multiple versions, and there's no way I can really talk about all the mythologies that exist. I don't think that's really possible. But one of the versions of this golden ram mythology is about King Athamas of Thessaly. He had two children, Phrixes and Haley, both of who were born of his first wife. His first wife died where they were very young, and the king remarried. And his second wife hated both of the children and was very cruel to them. So the god Hermes took pity on the children and fashioned a magical ram with wool of gold that would carry them to a land where they could be safe. But when the ram appeared to them, they jumped on its back, flew into the sky, but Haley lost her grip and fell into the ocean. So only Phrixes survived the journey, and when he landed to safety, he sacrificed the ram and hung it up in the hall of AET, where it was guarded by a sleepless dragon. So that's one version of the story. 
Um, and there, that fleece remained until it was stolen by Jason and the Argonauts. And here you can see in artwork different depictions of the Golden Fleece. Now, it's always important to remember that the stories of the stars vary depending upon time, place, and culture. So there really is no one true mythological story, but just a variety of them. We've come to the end of our video about Aries, so let's review everything we've learned so far. It's best seen in the autumn months in the northern hemisphere, and can even be seen into the early winter months. It's classified as a zodiacal constellation because the sun, moon, and planets pass through this star pattern. The best way to find it is to look for the Pleiades star cluster. Aries is really close to this particular star cluster, so that's what I use to help me find it. In terms of celestial objects, there are some faint galaxies that exist within the bat in the boundaries, but they only really can be seen with magnification. So I wish you luck trying to find Aries. Early in my stargazing career, this used to be a really ch a challenging one for me to find, but now that I understand where it is in terms of what is around it, I find it very easy to find. The Pleiades star cluster always stands out to me. It's one of the first things I see when I go outside in those autumn and winter months. And from there, I'm just able to look for that that gently curved line in the sky. And of course, I look for the alpha star as well. Remember, it takes time, patience, and practice to identify the star patterns, and I'm always going to encourage you to seek out dark skies because it just enhances your stargazing experience. So I wish you luck and keep looking up.